Hey, you. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. You're sitting there watching this because you're probably fantasizing about living in an RV or living in a van. You're fantasizing about a free nomad life, but you don't know where to begin. You're like still working. You're thinking at best it might be 10 years away. I don't know. Maybe it's five years away. Maybe it's a year away. I'm going to teach you today six simple things you can start doing today, whether you're 10 years out or even 20 years out. These are some simple things that you can start doing today to start preparing for a life of nomadness. Nomadness? <laughs> Nomadicity? You'll be surprised at some of the things that you can start doing now so that hopefully someday you can not be fantasizing anymore and not be sitting there, but be out here. These things are gonna help you transition from your sticks and bricks life to a nomad life. And they're also gonna help set you up for success once you do get on the road. So stay tuned, you're gonna love this. Hi friendlies, I'm Carolyn and welcome back to my RV life. I know a lot of you are here because you fantasize about living this life and maybe some of you are even in the planning stages. Maybe you're waiting for retirement, maybe you're saving your money, but whatever stage you're in, Many of you either wish you could be out here and maybe you never see it for yourself, but a lot of you are hoping that someday you can get out here and live this life. So I've come up with six things Many of them I did without even really realizing that I was planning for this life. And so a lot of this is based on experience and just talking to other nomads. And there's six simple things that you can do right now, starting today, to help prepare for RV or van life. So you ready to get started? I'm going to count down to what I think is the most important. So number one, okay. so the first thing that you can start doing today to prepare for RV life, and this is going to help you on a couple different levels, is to stop buying. Just stop buying stuff you don't need. One of the things that I realized a couple years before I moved into an RV, I had moved to like my third apartment after my divorce in two years, and I looked around and I'm thinking, I need a new lamp. I need a new shelf. I need new curtains. And I realized there's nothing wrong with the curtains and the lamp and everything that I have here. I don't need. And for me, one of the first steps about mentally preparing myself to live a more minimalist, smaller life was to change my mindset and to start examining thunder start examining need versus want. And I really started making a conscious decision to say, I don't need new curtains, I want new curtains. And that really helped me cut back on the things that I started buying. I think for a lot of us living in an RV, and especially the van dwellers, it really is about living a less consumerist, more minimalist life. And it certainly is that for me. And by stopping buying now, even if you're 10 years out, it serves a couple of purposes. Number one, like I said, it helps reframe need versus want. It really helps you, I think, prepare for this life because you start thinking, especially because you're living in a, in a small space, do I really need another comforter? No, because I don't have any place to put it. I just want another comforter. So it helps kind of reshape your thinking and reshape your orientation to stuff. So I think that's why this is so important to start thinking about right now. So number one, it reorients you to how much need, you know, need versus want. The second thing is it's going to help you save money. Uh, I realized years ago that for Americans, shopping is a hobby. It's what we do on weekends when we're bored. How many times have you ever gone to a department store, Macy's, Ultra, Ultra, Walmart, whatever your store of choice, just browsing, just browsing. You didn't need anything. You just went because you were browsing and you end up spending money pretty much usually, right? But for Americans in a capitalist society, consumerism has become a hobby. And so by making a conscious effort right now to stop buying things, you're breaking that consumerist habit and you will be amazed how much money you save. And you can start putting all that money that you're saving by not buying junk you don't need but want. And then you realize, yeah, do I really want it? Do I really need it? You can start putting that money away into a, a, an account that you can start saving for your emergency fund when you're on the road. Or maybe it'll help subsidize your income when you're on the road. So that's the second reason not buying, uh, stopping buying things right now is really going to help you. 
The third way it's going to help you is when you do get to the point where you're going to make that transition, you're going to have less stuff to get get rid of. You're going to have less stuff to sell or give away, less garage sailing or whatever. And, you know, another thing that I didn't include in this list, but kind of goes along with this, you can start decluttering now too. If you are fit five years or a year away, start decluttering your house, start going through things, start getting rid of things. You've heard my story a million times that when I got off the John Muir Trail, I looked around and I'm like, I lived without all this junk for a month. So maybe that's something that you can do now. So in in addition to not buying things anymore, look around. What stuff are you not using? You might even be able to downsize your house once you start getting into this mindset of want versus need or need versus want. And you really start analyzing that you don't need a new blouse. You don't need a new pair of shoes. You don't need a new tie. You don't need a new suit. You want one. Or because you want to fit in and look good at work or look good to all your friends, impress your friends with, you know, that new handbag, right? So I think that this is a really, really important step because, and and I'm listing it as number one because I think it is really going to help change your mind and help orient you to living with less, not only living with less in a smaller space, but living with less financially because um, I, gosh, this video is kind of going to get deeper than I anticipated, but that might be a topic for another video. Uh, Not only living with less than, because you're living in a smaller space, but learning how to subside, sub, what's the word, subsist, learning how to subsist on less income, right? So number one, I'm listing this as number one because I think it's really important. Stop buying and start rethinking need versus want. I think that'll set you up whether you whether you're 10 years away or 5 years away or a year away that's going to set you up for uh, let for success on the way. And the second thing that you can do now to start preparing for life as a full-time nomad, whether you're living in an RV or living in a van, is to start thinking about how you're going to support yourself, especially if you're not going to be retired. And there's a lot that you can do now to start setting yourself up to be able to earn a living while you're on the road. And it's really important to start this as soon as possible once you decide that you want to do this. You can learn a a new skill. You can go to school, maybe get a degree, maybe, you know, go to nursing school. Nurses are, are notorious for being out here and being able to travel and, uh, you know, from job to job. Uh, maybe it's starting your own business. Don't wait until you get on the road to start a business. Trust me, I've started two. It takes two to three years for that business to really get off the ground and start supporting you. And so the sooner you can start the business, the better. So start your new business now, start getting new clients, start building a resume, start getting recommendations, um, and re- uh, what are they called? And re- reviews from happy clients. That's gonna set you up for success on the road. Um, maybe st- start talking to a um, an employment counselor, what are they called? A, 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 or a life coach or something like that. If you think that you don't have transferable skills, if you think that you don't have a skill, you know, maybe you're um, a a landscaper or a contractor or a mechanic or somebody who does in-home care or whatever that is maybe you think that that's not a trade that you'll be able to take on the road it might be a good idea to talk to a, a professional counselor a career counselor who can help you identify skills that you have that might be transferable to something that you may be able to do on the road and I do plan on doing another video about working on the road not jobs because everybody's done jobs on the road but something a little different so stay tuned subscribe below that's going to be coming up soon but it's a really good idea if you're not going to be retired if you're not independently wealthy if you don't aren't going to have like you know income that you can rely on living in the road start thinking now about what you can do to earn a living on the road and again this this topic goes really deep I think you really have to redefine what you think work is and just really start thinking out of the box. Maybe start doing some research, maybe start looking at, you know, remote jobs in the 20, what are we, the 21st century and start researching that to figure out how you're going to be able to support yourself when you're living on the road. But earning a living is really key. So that's why that's number two. And tip number three for starting to plan or prepare for an RV life is to consider what kind of lifestyle 
lifestyle. You want to live on the road. I think this is really important because this is going to determine what kind of vehicle you get. It's going to determine how much money you need to have. It's going to determine whether you need to travel for work or whether you're going to be able to work remotely. But it's really important for you to kind of do some soul searching and decide whether or not you want to be a boondocker. Do you want to travel national parks? Do you want to travel to museums? Do you want to travel in cities? Or do you, like me, just want to spend most of your time close to nature in remote areas? It's really important for you to know that now because, like I said, it's going to dictate a lot of the different things that you're, a lot of the decisions that you're going to be making as you get closer to your nomad life. It's going to determine what size rig you get. Are you going to live in a van or are you going to live in a 53 foot bus? <laughs> you know, that's, and, and, um, and if you are going to live in a 53 foot bus, you need to buy that. And does that mean you're going to finance it, et cetera? Are you going to pay cash for your vehicle? There are a lot of variables that are going to go into choosing a vehicle and knowing how you want to live, how you want to do RV, van life, mobile home life, you know, class A life, whatever that is, uh, knowing how you want to live is really going to be important for making all all of those decisions. And before I go any further, I should have said, if you are thinking about RV life, I created a playlist, everything you need to know to get started, including choosing a vehicle, how to find boondocking, how to find internet, solar, everything you need to know, I have put in a convenient playlist. So I will put the link here. There should be a little circle with an eye and an explanation. Click up here. I will also put it in the description of the video. It's a great place to start if you're thinking about living in an RV. But that was number three, figuring out, being honest about what kind of lifestyle, what kind of RV lifestyle or van lifestyle you are honest, you are realistically going to be living. And that leads me to number four on the list of things that you can start doing today to prepare for successful nomad living. Start deciding or start thinking about what kind of vehicle you want to live in. And I really re recommend putting a lot of thought into this, a lot of soul searching. Again, it boils down to, are you going to be mostly in campgrounds? Are you going to go to national parks? National, many national parks have a 30 foot limit on RVs. So that's really going to dictate the kind of vehicle that you're going to get. Uh, if our, do you want to go remote? Do you really want to go in the boonies? You might want to consider a van or a four-wheel drive truck with a truck camper. So knowing the lifestyle that you want to lead, is lead uh, as a full-timer is really going to help you decide what kind of vehicle you need. And it's a good time now, even if you're 10 years out, I don't know, it might change, but start researching, start going to RV shows, start going to lots, start test driving. I made the mistake of, of doing it very fast. I think by the time I decided I wanted to live in an RV and the time I did it was like four months I probably only looked at and test drove maybe half a dozen RVs and we all know how that ha well, how that turned out right if you want to see my first year on the road in my lemon I named Matilda check out the playlist here it was a disaster it was only eight thousand dollars and I probably put three times that into it so it's a good idea to start educating yourself now on the different types of vehicles the pros and cons of the different types of vehicles and knowing potentially what your budget is going to be. Do you want to pay cash? Do you want to finance? If you're going to pay cash, go back to step number one, stop buying stuff. And when you stop buying stuff, that can go into your fund for paying cash for a vehicle. I wanted to come out here and simplify my life. So almost debt free, except for a little bit of student loans. And I will never hopefully cross fingers crossed finance anything again. My goal really is to be completely debt free. And if that's your goal, it's going to take some planning. So if you're 10 years out, out, that's really good you have a lot of time to plan and save for that but start looking really I, I can't tell you enough look at brand new vehicles look at used vehicles test drive some look at vans look at class B's look at class A's look at class C's go to uh, lots and ask a lot of questions and really just start doing all the research you can about the different types of vehicles so that you can at least start with an educated decision about what is best for you instead of kind of jumping in not necessarily knowing I have no regrets about ever going with a class C you know I, I'm a wannabe van lifer but that's just not realistic for me so I have no regrets about the type of vehicle I chose but I do have regrets that I didn't know enough about the problems of 
RVs when they sit too long, when they have multiple owners, when they're not taken care of, and all of those things. Again, uh, look at the playlist in the description for all of the information about how to choose a good RV, how to buy an RV. I even did a video about how to negotiate a good price. So again, actually that one, I'll put a link to that video right here. And uh, in the description, I will put links to everything that I have referred to. So that's number four. Start thinking about the type of vehicle, not only thinking, but get out there and start actively researching, looking at and driving all the different vehicles so that you really are informed before you make a decision about what's best for you. And, and tip number five for planning your future Nomad RV life is to get out and start practicing. Especially if you have no experience camping, if you have no experience boondocking, if you have no experience driving on, on national forest roads, if that's what you're going to be doing, if you think you're going to be a boondocker. And even if you're not, especially if you're solo, especially if you are a solo woman or man, you're going to be living this life alone and you've never camped alone. You've never traveled alone. You've never spent a night in a hotel alone. You need to get out and start practicing a a ASAP. Uh, it's going to be really hard. Imagine your first night alone in a national forest if you're going to be boondocking and you've never been alone in the forest before. It's going to be terrifying. You need to get out now. I didn't go from never doing anything alone to, you know, hiking 26 days on the John Muir Trail alone and then this past summer 576 miles and 56 days on the PCT alone. I didn't just wake up one day ne having never done anything alone and said that's what I'm going to do today. It was baby steps and it started with my very first one night backpacking trip by myself and that is what I suggest you do and again I did a video on that and I'll put a link up here and in the description but start practicing. Go Go to a, a campground. If you're a tent camper, you're sleeping in your car or whatever before you, uh, you might want to rent a vehicle and rent an RV eventually. But right now, just practice being alone. Just practice doing things alone. Practice being self-sufficient, figuring things out, troubleshooting on your own. Go on a little road trip on your own if you've never done that before. Drive a couple hundred miles. Stay in different campgrounds. Practice how to find a place to camp. You know, use some of the apps that I've talked about in my videos. Link up here. Uh, look for, you know, plan a trip, a, a camping trip, a multiple night camping trip so that you can really hone your skills in how to figure out how to do things on the move, you know, in the moment sometimes and how to deal when a campground is closed and you expected it to be open, you will be much more comfortable and happy and successful in this lifestyle if you have the confidence coming into it. Coming out here and trying to build your confidence when you have all of the systems, the, the black tank and the water and the refrigerator and the solar and the power and the chassis and the transmission. When you're, when you're out here and you have everything literally on your back to worry about and something goes wrong, that's, that's not the time to figure out what you're made of. That is not the time to find your confidence. I mean, you can, but it's the hard way to do it. That's kind of how I do everything the hard way. But why not go out and practice all this in your car? You know your car. Your car probably is pretty reliable. You take pretty good care of it. So go practice in your car first. That way, if you get to a campground and it's closed, that's the only thing you have to worry about. You don't have to worry about, oh, is my car going to make it to another, my, is my crappy old RV going to make it to another spot? I don't want to go up another hill or and whatever. I'm out of water. I need to get water. My black tank is full. I need to, I was going to dump my black tank here. It's really, really important to go out and start practicing this stuff now. And it's not a big deal, right? I mean, everybody has days off. Go sleep in your car. Buy a cheap tent. Start going out and, ex and doing things on your own. If you are going to be a boondocker, I really suggest going out into national forests and BLM lands and start exploring. Don't even have to commit to staying overnight. You might want to throw a... a, a you know, a tent and a backpack and some food in the trunk just in case, but just start going driving the roads just so that you see what they're like, especially if you're in a car and you think you're going to drive in a class C RV or a class A RV eventually on public lands, boondocking. Go out and explore it by car now. Easy. That way you can look at the road and you can say, hmm, yeah, okay, this isn't so bad. Or you can say, okay, yeah, this is bad. I would be really afraid to do this in a big class C RV. Just go out, explore. 
I've said before, uh, I think it was the video that I said 10 Signs RV Life is not for you and the other one, 10 Signs RV Life is for you. Again, I'll put links to both in the description. It should be right here, but I think they're also in the playlist. Uh, there were a lot of points in there about being adventurous. I don't know that you'd necessarily want to come out here and, and try to find your adventurous spirit. I think that if I were you, I'd want to find it first and I'd want to find some confidence first. It's It can be really overwhelming to come out here and try to do all of that while you've got your home on your back. It can be very overwhelming and that's probably the number one thing that ends up sending people back is they're not prepared they don't have the confidence, they don't have the skills, they've never done anything on their own before, they, they are, aren't good under pressure, they aren't good when things go wrong, and they panic, and that often makes things worse, and then they self-destruct, and they end up saying, nope, this life isn't for me. So get out and practice, practice, practice as much as you can. If you think that you might wanna live in a class C or a class A RV, I highly recommend renting one you can then get a feel for how it drives you can learn the systems they walk you through everything and teach you how all the systems work the black tank the fresh water it's all of that and that's a really good way to get oriented to what a class c or a class a but especially most of them rent class c's but what it's like to live in one go out and rent one i highly recommend it that also might help you in your decision of what type of vehicle you want to live in if you think you want to live in a class c and you rent a class c and it just terrifies you and you don't think it's something that you can get over with practice then that might mean you need to reconsider your choice of vehicle and that's also going to decide or that's going to um affect the rest of your planning so all of these steps kind of taken together you don't have to do them all at once if that overwhelms you just take one step at a time but again uh, going out and practicing exploring roads taking a road trip on your own learning how to be alone at night in the woods if you're going to be boondocking or even at night in a campground that can be really scary to a lot of people get out and figure all that out now before you get on the road so even if you're 10 years out it's the perfect time by the time if you're 10 years out from doing this and you start doing it now you're going to be a freaking pro before you get on the road and it's going to be no big deal the only thing then you're going to have to worry about is all the stuff that goes on with this. <laughs> and finally, that brings us to number six and what I think is the most important thing you can do right now to start preparing for RV life, again, especially if you're gonna be solo, and that is getting your mental health in order. Don't come out here thinking it's gonna fix you. Don't come out here thinking it's gonna fix you, all your problems, that all your problems are magically going to disappear. There's that famous saying that no matter where you go, you take you, you take you with you, and that's magnified exponentially when you're alone on the road. If you, like mentally, psychologically, can't handle being in your own skin, in your own head, you're not going to do well out here. You're, it, it, it would be, I would dare to say, dangerous. If you have any mental health challenges get them in order before you hit the road and if you're working with someone you definitely run this by them and let them know what you're doing this is you know I've, many of you who've been following me for a long time know that I have been in therapy a very long time I haven't had any serious mental health health challenges maybe a little PTSD some overeating uh, binge eating disorders and alcoholism and drug addiction and okay yeah maybe I have had some mental health issues you know but I'm not, like I'm not bipolar or uh, or uh, borderline or anything like that and I have talked a lot about being, well, we have talked a lot and really explored a lot about what it means to be alone in this lifestyle, living, especially in nature, as remotely as I do. And it it's not for everyone. It is definitely, it, it it's not for everyone. It takes a lot. I've still, I've been in therapy for 10 years, still on the road. I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure you can handle being by yourself in a wide open, structureless, borderless, open space by yourself. I like, I mean, that if you don't already have mental health challenges, that can cause you, that alone can cause you to have mental health challenges. So, really just make sure your mental health and also your physical health. I know that a lot of people, 
have physical challenges who watch me and a lot of people write to me and say I've got this and I've got that that health issue and I don't know that I would be able to do it I can't answer that question for you only you can but if you do have physical challenges that's another thing you're really gonna have to be honest about it's you know, there's stuff you have to do out here. You know, sometimes I have to climb on my roof and see what's going on. Sure, I guess you could always just take it in and have somebody else do it, but it's a lot easier if I can climb on the roof and look at it myself or try to change a tire myself. <laughs> I haven't had very much success with that. I don't know. I don't, I don't think, I just think sometimes the stress can be also physically challenging. Does that make sense? So if you have a physical challenge already, it's just gonna add one more layer of complexity and maybe difficulty on what can sometimes already be very challenging living. Does that make sense? So I definitely make, may, if you know, if you're, if you're a drug addict, if you're an alcoholic, I can't imagine being out here using I mean, this might sound dramatic. I don't know that I would still be here. Uh, I can't imagine being out here. I, yeah, I don't think it would have. No, I don't. I just thought of, I don't know. I would have. I think honestly, this is going to sound kind of harsh. I would have killed myself one way or another. Um, being out here drinking or doing drugs. Yeah, I think it would have been bad. So if if that, and I do hear from a lot of people who are currently drinking, uh, I, I just. You're not going to get fixed by coming out here. You have to work on yourself first. I don't recommend, I was in therapy six years before I came out here. I'd quit drinking, I'd quit drugging. I was healthier mentally, physically, emotionally than I had ever been. And that's an ongoing process for me. I continue to grow, hopefully, and evolve and get healthier and have more awareness about myself um, every day hopefully I mean that's my goal is to wake up and try to do better and feel better and feel and love myself as corny as that sounds even more than I did the day before and trying to do that work out here or just denying and not doing the work at all is a recipe for disaster so please 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 make sure you get your mental health in order this isn't gonna fix you nothing is gonna fix you um, except you doing the work the hard work the really 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 hard work that you have to do on yourself and I don't know I think everybody no matter who you are even if you came from the best childhood we all have our baggage okay see he's playing with an electrical cord oh that's not plugged in but we all have our baggage we every single one of us has been through stuff and I think it would benefit every single one of us to talk to someone and if you're planning this life why not talk to somebody just to run it by somebody make sure especially if you're going to be solo if you're in a couple or you plan on joining a group and being around other people you are not going to be as center focus as someone who comes out here and does this alone but um, i have a partnership with better help it's an online therapy and you can do it they do a sliding scale for some people who have fixed incomes and you can do zoom you can do phone and I'll put a link in the description. Actually, I'll put a link here. If if talking to someone you think might help you, I highly encourage you. I'm a huge advocate of therapy. Like I said, I think everybody on this planet could benefit from therapy. But especially if you are going to be solo, living a life out here in the remote wilderness, as remote as I can get these days, by yourself, it's really, really important to make sure you're mentally strong enough to be able to handle it. It's not for everyone, and I've seen a lot of people self-destruct. Um, I've seen some bad things. I've heard about some bad things. So, so do that, okay? So I want to know if I missed anything. For anybody who is on the road, what other things do you think people can do now to prepare for full-time RV living? Leave your comments below. I want to hear from you. So those were the six things that you can start doing today to plan and prepare for a life of full-time RVing or van dwelling. I hope you found these six tips helpful. If so, please subscribe below. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe and thumbs up. It all helps. And once again, I say this in comments, I just want to tell you, all of you who are with me, your moral support means the world to me. Without the moral support, I wouldn't be here today. As you know, it's been a rough road. So your moral support 
always share my videos with as many people as you can but sharing watching all the way through yes even the commercials all of that helps me keep this a sustainable full-time job and i appreciate each and every one of you for everything you do to support me all right Mwah. i'll see you next time in the meantime be happy be free and be kind Mwah. i'll see you all soon bye